All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about fantasy fantasy age. So fantasy age just came out a couple days ago. Uh, it was a huge success at Gen Con. Uh, it is the new core rules for Green Run and Press and Fantasy Age. Basically mimics all of the rules of Dragon Age. And thank goodness that Chris Premis took his game engine and kind of set it aside and said, look, we're going we're gonna to do your game, your IP, but we're going to use my engine to make it work. Because if he didn't do that, He'd have been screwed, and he wouldn't have been able to use that engine. It would have been, it would have probably belonged to uh, uh, EA. So smart move on Chris Pramus's part. But here you go. This is a uh, beautiful art, guys. Uh, you know, by Chris Pramus, and it has a t it's a ninety. Uh, this is a one hundred and forty-five page book. So and then and it goes in. You know, basically the same thing. It breaks it down into the different chapters. Then it talks. This is pretty much the same thing that's at the beginning of the the Dragon Age game, the Dragon Age core book, and then it has your example of play. And then it talks about Titan's Grave, which is a uh, Will Wheaton's fantasy setting, sci-fi uh, fantasy setting. And then it talks about uh, here's the you know here's the your player's guide after it gives the example play encounter. You can see all new art with this. They're not regurgitating. I don't even think they could regurgitate the Dragon Age art. It probably belongs to EA. Same nine steps in creating a character as the same nine steps that were in Dragon Age. Same thing. Determining everything's the same. Different color. Same stats. Here's accuracy, communication, constitution, dexterity, fighting, intelligence, perception, strength, and willpower for a total of nine stats in your game. I like more stats in a game because it it, it kind of eliminates min max. It doesn't eliminate it, but it kind of makes it harder when you have more stats. So the core races in the Fantasy Age setting. The Fantasy Age setting is the it's like Savage Worlds, guys. When you use the the Savage Worlds core book like this, this is the Savage Worlds core book. All right, this book runs you about twenty bucks for the hardback, thirty bucks for the hardback, or you can get the softback for eight bucks. The core book has everything you need to play: fantasy, sci-fi, superheroes, everything. Fantasy Age is pretty much the same thing almost. Now, Savage Worlds has been really successful because they put out other compendiums like here's the sci-fi hardback that adds sci-fi stuff on top of the little bit of sci-fi stuff that's in here. So if you play a sci-fi game, you play with this, this, and if you play like the last parsec, then I've got those books. I haven't gotten them yet, but I'll be doing a review for those next next week. Uh, but same thing goes for Fantasy Age. You're going to use the Fantasy Age book with Will Wheaton's Titan's Grave book. Same thing. So you're going to have to look at two different sources. But that's okay. Now the core races can be used in any, like it says, it can be used in any game. So the first race is a dwarf, and you can see it has the same type of setup as Dragon Age. All right, so there's the dwarf, there's an elf. There's a gnome. Great art. I like that. There's a halfling, a human, and an orc. So there you go. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of core races. But there's, you know, like I said, there's six races. Dwarf, elf, gnome, halfling, human, and orc. Those are your core six races in in a fantasy age backgrounds it goes into now this is a little different backgrounds are you know something that you want to you know you can roll for either you're going to be an outsider or lower middle or upper class 
or you can just kind of choose. It depends on what your game master wants to do. So there's all kinds of different things that, that you can that you can choose for a background. All right, so now with your, your race, you have your background. And there's like I said, there's all kinds of backgrounds. There is a, a ton of backgrounds. You can see there's a radical to a sailor to a squire to a soldier to a scholar to a scribe to a merchant, laborer, innkeeper, and it depends on the class that you roll. Like I said, you can roll a D6, an outsider, lower, middle, or upper class. Or if you're DM, he'll let you choose whatever. So here's the, the three classes. Guys, it's the same thing. Here's the mage. Wow, looks the same, doesn't it? Levels 1 through 20. Arcane Blast, level 1 Dragon Age. Arcane Blast for a mage. Doesn't cost you any, any mana. Now, magic is a little bit different in Fantasy Age. And I, I like the way that it is in Fantasy Age. And we'll go over that uh, as we kind of proceed here in the PDF. And you can pick this up uh, on RPG drive -through. You can You can go and buy... Uh, you can get the I think the I think it costs sixty five dollars for both the hardbacks for the Fantasy Age core book and the Titans Grave hardback and two PDFs. So they offer you the PDFs for five dollars more uh, on checkout. So that's how I got the PDFs for pre ordering the books. So as you know, and it's like I think it was like sixty bucks. So there you go, guys. Everything's the same. You got your ability focuses, you got talents, same thing, same exact game, same exact. There's the rogue. There's only three classes in Fantasy Age, guys. Three classes. Warrior, rogue, mage. Here's the rogue, but there's a lot of flavor to go along with this so don't let the th only three classes scare you I didn't mean only three classes as in no variety guys there's so many ways to customize these characters it's crazy I mean every level you get to do something and you get to do multiple things some levels so there's the warrior then it talks about gaining the levels <clears throat> you're starting cash I mean how to calculate your defense you know and that's what I like about Dragon Age and also uh, Fantasy Age you have not only your target armor class to hit but you also have a mitigation factor uh, which is basically uh, your armor now if you're the heavier armor you're wearing the less damage you're gonna take the lighter armor you're taking the more damage you can take and here's the thing Anybody can use any armor, even mages. So mages, if you want to cast in heavy armor, by all means go for it. But there is a penalty. <laughs> I threw that in there. I got all you mages out there. I got your hopes up, and I got your hopes up, and I just sh I just took you down. And I'll show you in this in the uh, the spell casting section. <laughs> <laughs> and spell casting section what the uh you know how you're hindered by wearing heavier armor so same thing 3d6 guys same as dragon age basic test 3d6 plus your ability plus if you have any kind of ability focus you would add plus two here's all the action same as same as dragon age Here's the combat stunts. There's your five point lethal blow that we talked about for 2d6 extra. There's your one one uh, skirmish that you can use more than one time. Same ones, guys. Same game. Different different small things. This goes into mounted combat and flying combat. Here's here's all the character options. Here's all the different uh ability focuses for all nine different stats here's all your different talents from alchemy to animal training to archery style to contacts dual weapon style there's a lot of these that are the same as Dragon Age but there are some new ones also so there's lots of guys there's tons of ways to spe you know to uh, modify and customize the character that you really want to play 
Now, there were specializations in Dragon Age. Wow, look at here, guys. In in uh, Fantasy Age, there are the same types of specializations, a.k.a. archetypes, if you're familiar with D&D 5e. So, for the mages, uh, we'll see. There's a Arcane Scholar. There's an Assassin for the Rogue. There's a Berserker for the Warrior. There's an Elementalist for the Mage. A Duelist for the Rogue. A Guardian for the Warrior. A Knight for the Warrior. A Mage Hunter. Looks like a Witch Hunter from uh, Warhammer. And the Warrior Specialization. There's a Sharpshooter for the Rogue. And a Miracle Worker for the Mage. A Sword Mage. for the, So there's basically... Uh, looks like there's four specializations. Or four archetypes per character. And this is just the core book, guys. As they put out their setting book for the fantasy, it'll add more races for that setting. It'll add any kind of adjustments to equipment. It'll add all kinds of different uh, uh, monsters. It'll add, believe me, I'll show you when we get to Titan's Grave. So he, And here's the equipment. Pretty much the same thing as Dragon Age. All kinds of great art, you know, explaining what everything does, the carrying sizes of bags, clothes and fat. This is basically the same thing as uh, what, what's in the, the core book for, for Dragon Age. And I know I keep comparing the two guys, but it is literally the same game with different art and some different text. But it's not bad. I, I, I love both games, so I can't, I, and I really can't wait to play this. So, All right. So here's magic. Here's what I was talking to you guys about magic. Magic is definitely different, definitely different in Fantasy Age compared to Dragon Age. You use mana, all right? You basically use mana or, or magic points. You cast a spell if it's successful, spend your points, do the spell. If you're not successful, you still spend the points. And depending on how bad you fail, you could have like an arcane explosion. So uh, here's your spell stunts. Now, in Fantasy Age, you get to choose two different types of fields of, of, of casting. Okay, you get to choose two points. All right. I, th I think it's two. Yeah. A level 1 mage begins the game with the novice degree and two magic talents. Each of these paths gives the mage two spells, so a starting character at level 1 will begin the game with four spells total. If you are the only mage in your group, you should seriously consider taking healing arcana, uh, because you don't want your party dying. So, here's air arcana. So, there's four spells in air arcana. You automatically start with the two, these two here. Protective, uh, protective winds and uh, voices of the wind, <clears throat> and then as you spend another talent, as you spend another spell point, then you go from a novice to a journeyman, and then you, as you go to journeyman, then you'll learn wind blast. So you'll get this, and then when you go to master with air arcana, then you get winds of light, and there's all kinds of different magic fields. There's Air Arcana, Divination, Earth Arcana, Fate Arcana, Fire Arcana, Healing Arcana, Heroic Arcana, Lightning Arcana, Power Arcana, Shadow Arcana, Water Arcana, Wood Arcana. So there's, there's 12 different types, 12 different fields of magic, and your character gets to choose two. And I believe you can either you can even choose more, I believe. But the more you choose, I believe that's how it works. The more you choose, the less that you're going to be able to upgrade the other ones. So you can either choose a new one or upgrade one from novice to like, uh, you know, you can go from novice to the other one, uh, which would be journeyman. And then if you're journeyman, then you could upgrade to master. So there it is. Now here, this there's a whole chapter on stunts exploration stunts guys role playing stunts plus you got your spell stunts you have your combat stunts so there's not as many stunts as there are in Dragon Age but 
each setting it also says that each setting could put more stunts into the game too so here's the uh, the dungeon master Sa same thing the dungeon master stuff uh, you know it has nice little crisp, quick reference cards you can print off this talks about the free port setting so you better believe their first campaign setting that they put out with this will probably be the free port setting they've already got it out it is a beautiful 500 page book or 600 page book for Pathfinder Freeport is very popular they're gonna definitely do this for drag uh, for uh, age as well for fantasy age this is like Chris Pramus's baby so you know that's gonna be like the first thing probably I would imagine so imagine more races ship combat all that stuff to be put in for fantasy age so it talks about the different types of players creating a campaign uh, you know mastering the rules you know how to determine the tests and stuff like that all kinds of great new art I really like it some attack roll modifiers some optional rules <clears throat> now chapter 9 has your your adversaries these are 100 percent different than what was in Dragon Age so you know here's like a bandit here's a, a demon soldier a dragon here's the giant giant spider goblin I like the goblin art I like it golem manacore medusa ogres orcs well orc uh, serpent folk spectre walking dead so there's not a lot of creatures it, it is definitely lacking creatures but your setting that you go is going to have more but I'm sure they'll probably have f a full companion come out of nothing but more monsters or sci-fi monsters so there will be plenty of variety but guys this game just came out but I, I, I expected the book to be a little bit bigger than 145 pages and I, I, I expected a lot more monsters I'm talking like core monsters of all fantasy settings like a lich and a kobold I, I expected all that kind of stuff and it's just it's just not there guys there's no elementals there's nothing giants nothing but guys like I said it will it's brand new and and I have I have hope for this game Green Ronin is a good company so here's rewards uh, for the different types of monsters your your monsters are by category so they're either considered routine easy average or hard I don't know why companies keep doing this I would rather see creatures with a level assigned to them it makes things uh, a little bit easier to to do from a DM standpoint because you want to be able to say okay I can you know and then say uh, one for one character or two for one character but it does a pretty good job explaining routine easy and average so I will give them that but I would like to see uh, I, I would like this challenge rating bullshit to be thrown in the goddamn dumpster and this other challenge rating stuff to be gone I would just like to see levels so there you go uh, sorry and a little mini rant for you too um, but it's a good rant. I'm not the only one that says that, and most people think that. Here's all kinds of treasure. Here's how to build magic items. So this is really cool. This this reminds me of 13th Age, where you have common, uncommon, rare, and legendaries. And then here's all kinds of different magic item benefits that you can add on to the weapon. Here's all kinds of uh, temporary magic items, which temporary are basically one-use items like your potions and whatnot so there you go there's all the permanent magic items some named things like the worm slayer the worm slayer is a long sword featuring a gilded hilt in the shape of a dragon's neck with the head as the pommel and spreading wings as it cross guard at its cross guard the blade provides a plus two bonus on attack rolls which increases to plus three against dragons and dragon like creatures additionally worm slayer and fix inflicts 1d6 damage to dragons and dragon like creatures and allows its will to perform the pierce armor and mighty blow stunts against them at only a cost of one stunt point each instead of wow instead of like three 
So lastly, Worm Slayer Blade glows with a fiery reddish light when a true dragon is within a mile of it, the light glowing in proportion to the closeness of the beast. Uh, from a fainter glimmer to a bright as a lantern within 100 feet. Nah, that's pretty cool. I like that. So here's the here's the campaign setting. And what does it talk about? Whoa! Freeport! So there you go. <laughs> so uh, imagine Freeport. Definitely, uh, their Freeport will definitely be out for Fantasy Age. I'm sure they're probably already working on it. So here's a lot of, uh, you know all kinds of things for doing a fantasy uh, setting and then here's a really nice adventure that is a uh, a plug-and-play and it's a pretty pretty nice adventure I, I liked it not a not a real long adventure but a, a good one to say the least and that's pretty much it everybody that is the core fantasy age rules by green ronin press character sheet at the back looks just like the dragon age character sheet minus dragon age my <laughs> and fantasy age added same thing though it's it's a great game guys i know there's a lot of comparisons but you know dragon age was actually designed first so of course this mimics dragon age all right so there you go six races three core classes 12 archetypes Tons of talents to choose from. What was there? 14 spell casting fields to choose from. Awesome. Awesome. 